Hey, what's up you guys? You're watching Team APS, Paul here. In today's video, I'm going to share five Yu-Gi-Oh cards that I think really could use hollow reprints. Uh, these are cards that have suspiciously all been commons despite being, you know, centerpiece cards for a lot of different decks or just like staples or whatever. And so I think that they should all get reprinted, whether that's in an OTS pack, it's like a super rare, or in some major reprint set like another Battles of Legend, not really sure. And uh, at the end of the video, I also want to know which cards you guys want to see get reprinted. Let's hop right in with what I think is probably the most relevant right now, Supreme King Dragon Dark Worm. So um, this card is a common, and that's so weird to me because it's kind of the you know new hot card in Pendulum Magicians and you know just Pendulum decks in general. This card you can use Dragon Shrine or Foolish Burial to send it to the grave, activate its effect bring itself back to the field, and so now you have a one of the Pendulum Monsters you'll need to make Electromite, but also it even searches a scale for you. Supreme King Gate Zero, I think is what it's called. So yeah, um, that's kind of crazy. I mean, this card's really, really good, and then like, it's a common and strange. Every time I see Pendulum Magician deck profiles or, you know, just whatever Pendulum deck profile, and this card's like a common amidst all the, you know, ultra rare magicians and like, you know, secret rare Pendulum Sorcerers, and, Dualist Alliance, all this stuff, and it's just like, oh, this is a common? Like, what is this? Because this is really like a crucial integral card. It's a plus one, it helps make a lecture might. It's really accessible, like just an easy engine to tech into like any pendulum deck. And um, even if you take the competitiveness out of the card, Dark Worm is still like the centerpiece card for the Zark strategy, which I know not many people really run that in like tournaments, but if you're running it for fun, it still surprises me that Konami didn't make this card really like an ultra or a secret rare. I mean, it's a pretty good thing. Um, really easy to use. I, I think for most of the cards on this list, I'm gonna just be like, oh, it could be like a super rare in an OTS pack. But this card, I'm surprised, was not printed at a higher rarity to begin with. I think it'll definitely end up in an OTS pack. It seems like it's too um, meta prevalent not to. And to be completely honest, um, Supreme King Gate Zero could also afford to get reprinted uh, as a super. I think like it should be a super. Maybe this should be like an ultimate rare, an ultra rare. I don't know. I think that would be super awesome. I think for Pendulum players to kind of help like max out the rarities of these decks, that makes a lot of sense. Um, it's just a cool card, and I feel like the art and everything will lend itself really well to being printed as a hollow. The second card is Kyoto Waterfront. This is the Kaiju Field spell, and it's pretty relevant because, you know, World Chalice did recently win YSA Spokum. That's a big deal, but that's not really the focus here. I mean, I think Kyoto Waterfront as the field spell that it is really should have been printed hollow to begin with. Um, most of the meaningful field spells in history have been printed as like hollows, you know, Magical Meltdown, Dragonic Diagram, even just Spiral Resort and like, you know, those types of cards, they've all been like at least supers. So it's strange to me that Kyoto Waterfront wasn't. Now, I think that might have been to go along in the vein of like Kaiju's being a pretty low rarity deck. Um, all the monsters are just rares and like, at best you've got like Interrupted Slumber as a super rare. But Kyoto Waterfront, I mean, it's shown like competitive promise. It actually makes Gamisiel a really scary card for your opponent to deal with if you get it out on your field. And it can get counters really fast when you're like using Link Summons and things like that. Uh, let you search the kaiju monsters themselves. That's pretty scary. So I don't know I mean like I think as a super rare in an OTS pack perhaps this card would be rather fitting especially because um, World Chalice is likely to be kind of more popular going forward people are gonna want to try this out and there's always gonna be the players who want like you know the hollow all rare everything and it's like uh, well this is a common so sorry deal with it yeah this, this card definitely needs to be printed as a hollow. The next card is Performage Trick Clown, a card that's been out for quite a while, came out in like 2015, um, and it's been, to varying degrees, meta relevant since its release. Um, it, you know, whenever it gets sent to the graveyard, no matter how, it can summon itself back, you take a thousand damage, and that's just that. Now, because it's a light monster, it's been really popular with Brilliant Fusion, you know, you send it and your Gem Knight Garnet, to make Seraphonite and then it comes back and so it gives you like lots of free material to do things with. Uh, it also popularized the whole Clown Blade engine because you could just use like uh, Heroic Champion Thousand Blades because you took damage, it could summon itself back and these two monsters in tandem would make a free rank four for you and that deck was actually kind of popular for a while. 
And then Trick Clown, I mean, it's been used in Shadal's when it was released. It's been used in the regular Performage decks. It's been used in Light Swords, of course, recently. And so when you see all the different applications of this card and how even today, I mean, it's still used in the Minerva Turbo 60 card stuff, it's kind of surprising that it's been common the whole time. It's even gotten multiple printings and still just stayed common. It's kind of weird. Um, what's unfortunate, I think, is that it kind of has missed its opportunity for like OTS pack super printing because like, you know, usually they'll print OTS supers when they're meta relevant. So it's kind of why I think like Dark Worm or Waterfront seem more likely to have gotten like a super rare printing compared to this. But still, um, I would definitely say that, you know, it deserves it. Well, however it gets printed, I don't really care. In a set like Pendulum Evolution or Dimensional Guardians or something like that, um, one of these spin-off sets like, you know, uh, Dark Saviors, that type of stuff, yeah, sure. I think, I mean, this, this would be a really fitting super rare in one of those sets, so I do hope it happens. So card number four is Void Feast, a card that is not talked about as much. It's really just for Infernoids, but it's really important for that deck because it's kind of their like staple combo starter right now. For a long time, that might have been considered like that grass looks greener, you know, grass and fernoids, but then grass got limited to one, so this card is sort of the more important, more reliable combo starter, I would say, for infernoids. Um, it lets you summon three infernoids from your deck, which is huge, and, you know, that's namely gonna be like Decatron and stuff. I'm just surprised it's a common, because really, for Infernoids, most of their spells and traps, all, you know, like Void Imagination and um, Void Seer, all those cards, they've all been like super rares or ultra rares or, you know, whatever rares, but now it's just like Void Feast comes out and it's common, that's weird. And even the monsters in Infernoids have, you know, like Deviati and like Anunku, they're all like these high rarity monsters, and so it just surprises me that Void Feast would get released as a common. I thought it was going to be maybe like a super rare and like Raging Tempest, you know, it wouldn't be expensive, and if you're an Infernoid player, you just pick up a couple of copies, they're maybe a dollar or two a piece, and that's the end of the story. But for it to get printed common is strange. So hopefully it will eventually find its way into a hollow printing in some form or fashion. Don't know where, I mean, it definitely won't be an OTS pack, so maybe it'll just be another one of those big Battles of Legend type packs. I'm not really sure, but I think it definitely deserves it. And the last card is Unizombie, a card that all things considered, reminds me the most of the Swap Frog Dilemma. Um, Unizombie is integral to zombie strategy. Since its release, it has been that card. Because both of its effects are extremely strong. You get to pitch a zombie from either your hand or your deck to the grave and increase monsters in the field's levels. This is kind of the centerpiece of the whole Solitaire into Omega play, where you summon Solitaire, attribute it, summon Unizombie, use Unizombie, pitch Mizuki, use Mizuki, bring back Solitaire, sync them both, Make Omega, one card of commitment. Very cool. Um, and, you know, in all zombie decks, that's it's a good card. It pitches Mizuki, sure, but I mean, it can also pitch Plague Spreader if you're running that type of thing. You know, any other zombies you want to get into the grave. Pretty useful in like Vendred decks, for example. Um, I'm just so surprised that it's gotten like multiple printings. I think it actually got printed in an OTS pack and it was still a common or something like that. I don't know why. Um, so yeah, this card like needs a high rarity printing. Super for sure, but like really, I mean, it could be like an Ultra or an Ulti and zombie players could rejoice because so many other zombie cards are like already hollow and a lot of them have been out for a while. Like Mizuki comes to mind, but unfortunately Unizombie is not. So it definitely deserves it. I hope it gets it. And uh, yeah, maybe it'll be an ultimate rare one day. That concludes the video. Those are the five cards that I think definitely deserve hollow reprints. There's so many cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! that do, honestly, it's kind of crazy. Um, I'm sure you guys can leave lots in the comments, the cards that you want to just kind of finish hollowing out that deck, whatever it is. Um, it just seems like it's, it's we're always struggling in Yu-Gi-Oh! to like, make our decks look perfect. So, yeah, that's the vid. Hope you guys liked it. Let me know down in the comments what cards you want to see get reprinted. And uh, be sure to thumbs up the video if you liked it. Subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm going to be doing loads more, like top fives, top tens, things like that. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be it. So I'll see you guys in the next one.